MetaSwitch supplies the interconnect aspect of the IMS core, providing routing and security for voice calls out of NIMS and into the many interconnected networks within the Deutsche Telekom Group. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content at Telekom TV, and to explain more about NIMS, I'm joined by Paul Britton, VP Product Strategy at MetaSwitch. Hello, Paul. Very good to see you again. Let me start by asking you about the role of MetaSwitch in the NIMS project. Well, hello, Guy. Good to see you again. And um, yeah, as you said in the introduction, we provide the interconnect side of the IMS core. So um, uh, we connect NIMS out to many other networks within Deutsche Telekom um, across all of the properties. Um, if I go a bit more technical for a moment, um, that means we're de um, deploying a large number of session border controllers across all the NIM sites. Um, so that's the sort of uh, function we provide in the network. Uh, but in many ways, um, what's more unusual and novel about the project is that there was a lot of collaborative work on automation and the configuration management process for those pieces and NIMS generally, um, and, and a lot of work there to help Deutsche Telekom build those processes. And what was the motivation of MetaSwitch to take part in the NIMS project? You know, and also, how do you see NIMS from a strategic perspective in the industry? Uh, well, for obviously, uh, to start off with, um, it's a, a major and prestigious project to be involved in. Um, so like any vendor, we would be uh, keen on that. Um, but um, the unusual aspect here was that the Deutsche Telekom team had a, a rare combination of great clarity of the key KPIs that they were wanting to achieve and an open mind on what the best approach was to get to them. That meant it was a very um, uh, open project environment where we could collaborate with the customer and the other vendors to deliver on all the promises of NFV and virtualization in a way that isn't often seen, too, too often it's too constrained. So it was a really interesting project from that point of view. So how did you ensure interoperability within the NIMS environment? Yeah, really interesting question. It uh, sort of comes in two parts. So how box A talks to box B at a technical level is well defined by the IMS and standards and well understood by all the partners. Um, but what was novel in NIMS was the real world application of CICD or DevOps, if you prefer, uh, to telco, um, even more novel um, uh, when NIMS uh, project kicked off sort of 18 months ago because it had not been widely implemented in our industry at that point. But this is where DT's collaborative approach to the whole project really um, came to the fore. Uh, so all the partners were uh, very constructively engaged on working out both how the initial model for the project should be built um, and avoiding looking back too much towards how physical networks were created and managed, and instead looking to ensure we could achieve the KPIs that Deutsche Telekom needed and making sure that the uh, overall solution delivered on those cloud native um, goals uh, that were set for NIMS. It was that, uh, as a result, a very open-minded two-way learning process all the key, key pain points and possibilities of automation came to the fore and open discussion. All the parties had plenty of opportunity to discuss them and sort them out. And it worked very well. It was a good project. I just say it was a two way learning process. It was highly collaborative. You're introducing new models. It was obviously a learning process for, for all the partners creating something so new. So what was perhaps your, your most unexpected experience? Well, I think that would have to have been back to the uh, days of the proof of concept um, project where we were very heavily involved in creating the initial automation demonstration um, here to uh, the uh, exec team at Deutsche Telekom in front of my own um, uh, exec team and in fact um, key uh, personnel from all the vendors. Um, but what was exciting and novel there was um, we used Christoph's own home phone line as the test kit. And as part of the demo um, before the project went ahead, we totally destroyed and rebuilt the entire network live in front of all those executives. It was a fantastic demo of um, automation and the confidence that uh, the Deutsche Telekom team and Christoph had on uh, their part 
um, in terms of how well it would go. But it was a bit nerve wracking. <laughs> it's a very, very high powered audience to do things like that in front of uh, live. I bet it was. It's, and as you say, it certainly does um, highlight the amount of, of confidence in the project. You know, if we look ahead a few years, Paul, how do you think platforms in the Telco core network will be built in, say, 2023? So I think there will be two key evolutions in that time. Um, one is around automation, where NIMS is a superb poster child for that. Um, telcos want it from an OPEX point of view. Um, the whole industry, in fact, the whole IT industry, the broader IT industry, not just Telco, um, is pushing in that direction. And that's how the hyperscalers like Azure achieve their efficiencies. Um, so it's rightly a, a very important focus going forwards. Um, but I think you'll also see a move whereby operators will start to embrace the benefits of using public cloud as well as private. Because um, there can be some very significant TCO um, savings either from using public cloud for cloud bursting or for quick access to new markets, um, or indeed um, TCO savings for complete network deployments. Um, but where one of the most interesting aspects there is um, the security model for cloud and the focus on security for cloud is changing rapidly. And again, automation will be key there. And the hyperscalers have decades of experience running very secure public clouds which is exactly what is needed for um, running essentially key parts of the national infrastructure, which are the telco networks. And I think there'll be a lot of learnings there coming from the hyperscaler world towards um, the telco uh, network um, operations teams going forwards over the next few years. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, good speaking with you. Thank you very much for taking part in the programme today. And for the complete picture on the NIMS project, please do look at the other videos in this series. There are seven interviews in total, plus two panel discussions that delve deeper into the subject. And watch out for news of our live Q&A programme. That's coming soon. For now, though, thank you for watching and goodbye.